Now on nurses, little Jessica's laser therapy gets underway. The Mountfords carry on camping, and just how aware of the world is a premature baby? It's a few weeks since parents Nikki and Andy were advised to keep Jessica's face out of the sun, and today they're at the children's ward waiting for her first laser treatment. This will be a test to see how her skin reacts before the long process to remove the port wine stain birthmark on her face begins. I think what I'll do is I'll stick yeah. to the side of the face mainly. Yeah. I'll do probably about half a dozen uh, little spots. And I think I'd like to try a couple on the centre as well. It would be useful for us to know how at least something more central will react. Mm. And they'll look purple when she okay. comes back, so don't be worried. I am really nervous about it. I'm really nervous for her. And it's been strange leaving Abigail at home as well. And it's the first time that they've been apart. But she's coping with it really well. And, um... I mean, obviously, we're very positive about it and we're excited, but it's still quite nerve-wracking at the same time. If I think of exactly what she's going to have done today, then uh, yeah, it, uh, I get very nervous about it and uh, a little bit emotional, but um, we've, had a, we've had so many chats together ourselves and, and we've got lots of information, so we're kind of looking forward to getting on with it, really. But it will be quite relieving once she's had the general anaesthetic. Once little Jessica is anaesthetised, the procedure can begin. The laser being used is set up especially to target and seal the blood vessels in the hope of reducing and ultimately removing the birthmark. But first, Kay Thomas will test the laser on an unaffected spot on Jessica's arm. Are we all set? Okay. So now I'm going to move on to the birthmark. So you can see that's just the aiming beam, so that's telling me where it's actually going to go. And you see, if you watch carefully, you'll see a very quick flash, which is actually the laser beam, like that. And then you immediately you can see a purpuric spot coming up, which is because the blood vessels have been blasted by the, the, the laser. So that's a normal response. But this is just a test, because it's her first one. But if you're doing the whole lot, you put the spots beside each other and cover over the whole area. So you can imagine it's quite disfiguring. So the children and the parents need to be well warned that they will look quite bruised when they... On that one. Because this is only a test to see how Jessica's skin takes to the laser treatment, her ordeal is quickly over and she is soon wheeled out to recovery. Midwife Richard Mountford, together with his family and dog Dylan, are off camping for two days. Leaving nothing to chance, Richard's cramming the car with almost everything except the kitchen sink. His wife Janet also works for the Trust, where she runs NICU, the special care baby unit. Tables in, chairs are in, sleeping bags, pillows, lights, the RCD's in, power hook up, tent, ground sheet, dog food, air beds, pump. Our vitamins in! Yeah, your vitamins are in. Tools. So, don't forget the dog. You got the dog? No. I better bring him as well, then. Yeah. That's in then. Specialist neonatal nurse Chrissy Israel is delighted that she's been able to raise the funding for a four year long research programme to be carried out by her and a team of NICU nurses. The research is to compare the sensory and physical development of premature babies with those who've managed to get to full gestation. The test is identical for each baby and uses a range of movements and sounds. Well, we're absolutely sure that babies, when they're in the mum's womb, at the last period of their development, just maybe between the seventh and nine months, the babies can hear. The nurturing that the mum provides, the love and protection, is actually very important for the baby's outcome and development in the future. And what we're hoping to show that these little ones, although they're small, developmentally, they are actually quite alert and responsive. And what we're going to hopefully do with this programme is to enable the mother to engage appropriately so that the mother and baby relationship is really enhanced. Today, Mum Louise and Dad Oliver are watching their son Leo being assessed. He was born four weeks early, weighing six pounds, 13 ounces. The tests look first at physical development before observing the baby's mobility and reactions to visual and oral stimulation. Part of this research, to me, is probably one of the most exciting things that I've actually come across because as nurses, we are the ones who are working with the families. 
working with them in incubators, working with them in the cots, and then we're able to actually assess them what they're actually doing and what they can potentially offer. Mm. Very tiny, I mean, sometimes early babies actually moving their arms and legs mm. beautifully and making some lovely crawling movements, and the parents love to see that. When we do how they react to sound and movement mm. and focus on a sound or a movement, turn towards it, it shows the parents that they're much more aware than I think certainly the parents would think, and also we've been quite yeah. surprised by what they do. It was amazing, especially seeing him with the ball and everything, following it around. It was, it was quite a surprise. surprise yeah. so he's only started opening his eyes the last couple of days and we haven't noticed him following anything like that. I've never looked at a baby in total like this, so you're looking mm. at the coordination, movement and connection that the baby's already made, as well as its ability to be alerted and focused on visual and audio stimulation at the same time. Is the pitch of the voice that Mandy's going to use, which is so, might sound a little bit strange to you? Hello. Hello, Leo. That's right. Come over here. Hello. Hello there. You found me. Come and find me here. Hello. I think the most important thing from this demonstration what he's done is all the wonderful things that he's already here he just needs that little bit of extra development to get him on target having a premature baby nursed in an incubator separated from the mum the mum's therefore not able to provide that attachment and this is where this program is coming in to actually say this is your baby you need to get to know him and we're hopefully going to show you some skills that will enable you to achieve the best potential for you and your baby so that you are not missing out that very wonderful part of the pregnancy that you've been so that you've missed out on by having your baby prematurely. Veronica Woodbury is a gynaecology theatre nurse with some 20 years experience. She works regular shifts as an agency nurse in the main theatre complex where she once worked full-time as a member of staff. This morning we are doing what's called a laparoscopic hydrotubation. And this procedure is usually done for people with infertility problems. And what we do basically is we squirt dyed fluid up through the fallopian tubes to see if the fluid is flowing through them and there's no blockages. The best thing for me is fascination of the surgery. We all get a bit of a, an adrenaline kick. It's a very satisfying way of taking care of the patient. Since leaving the trust to join the agency, Veronica's discovered that life at work is very different to being a full-time member of staff. The main advantage of being an agency nurse is that I have my freedom. Money can't buy that. The downside of that is, if I'm not needed, um, I'm not needed. So therefore I don't get work, I don't get pay. You don't get any sick pay, you don't get a pension and you could be sent anywhere. Every time you work a shift, the people who have employed you are asked to make comments on your practice and if they're not happy, um, they certainly will not have you back again. The compensation for this lack of security is substantial, although Veronica feels that the rate she's paid is appropriate for all her colleagues. The money is over double what I was being paid when I was here and I personally consider that that is the rate nurses should be paid. One of my colleagues' nephews just started with the Metropolitan Police at the age of 21. He's gone in on £20,000. And a theatre nurse would be getting possibly anything from 14 to 17000 but usually the lower. But Veronica's decision to work as an agency nurse wasn't motivated by money. Her father became seriously ill and needed her nursing care until his death recently, which led to a crucial turning point in her life. Veronica has embarked on a new and radically different career. Having been through that experience, I think I examined my own mortality and my life, so I had to um, cut the chains and I'd wanted to sing professionally for a long, long time. With little Jessica recovering from her anaesthetic, Nikki and Andy are hoping that the test will demonstrate that she will be receptive to laser treatment to remove her facial birthmark. We've got to wait to see how her skin's reacted to the laser, which will be quite a testing time. It'll answer all our questions and we'll know which way we're going then, really. Yeah. <laughs> She will be a bit floppy to start with. 
Although a little grumpy after the anaesthetic, Jessica knows it's good to be back with mum and dad. Having got themselves to the campsite in Wales with all their gear, the first job for the Mountfords is to put the tent up. Through. Sorry. Uh, windsurfing! Oh! Hey, you've run out of water, though. <laughs> it doesn't look like much like a tent. I'm not sleeping in this tonight. For goodness sake. <laughs> right. You got it? <laughs> in some you. form, yes. Oh. I did it! Dad, <laughs> come here. Come here. They're all going for that tree. That's right. Hold that. You need no, to hold. tell them that you're in the Look, Josh! Now, what? Pack <laughs> it in, now. You haven't got the first peg in yet, Richard. What we seem to be doing is lifting it up and letting it fall down. Are well, we ready now? No. Oh, I've got the ball room in there. But it's going to take till Sunday to put this up. At the hospital's emergency department, patient Bill has been brought in after experiencing a series of dizzy spells and discomfort in his chest. Staff nurses Mike Peters and Clodagh Renane are going through the normal routine of connecting Bill to an ECG monitor so they can see how his heart is performing. Put your head back in the bed, shoulders down, pretend you're lying on a beach or something. He's had this uh, heaviness in his chest earlier on and, and collapsed at home. Um, so they called an ambulance, he was conscious with the crew initially and on the way in he collapsed. Uh, and he exhibited a rhythm which seemed to uh, demonstrate that he was having a heart attack, uh, but he spontaneously recovered from that. Getting a little bit of a strange feeling there. Get a bit of a strange feeling? Okay, where in your chest? Or just generally? Okay, Dr. Teresas. Dr. Teresas now, Clodagh. Okay. Dr. Teresas now. Can I have a Dr. Teresas stat, please? Who's this? Okay, I don't have any have definite. Like this, what we got on there? Suddenly, the relatively peaceful atmosphere in the department changes dramatically, and Registrar Julian Williams is summoned. Our leads are off there. I'm going to do a thump. No, he's awake. He's awake. He's awake. Okay. Yeah. Come on, mate. How you going? Take a deep breath for us, there, mate. How are you, then? Uh, I'm better. I just uh, sort of faded out there a bit. Yeah, you yeah, did a little bit, didn't you? Yeah. Had a bit of a faint. Take some nice, slow, deep breaths for it. When we were assessed him, when we were first, uh, first doing the ECG, he collapsed and uh, his heart appeared to stop completely. Um, so we called for the, the reg to come and help. I thought that he'd gone into a different rhythm. I was about to bang him on the chest and get the defibrillators out, but it turned out that he, he, he wasn't. He was just very, very flat. Sometimes when people collapse completely and faint completely, their heart appears to stop. Um, sometimes their heart stops and spontaneously starts again. It was one of those. We actually got an ECG trace of the event and uh, his heart appeared to stop for anything up to about 20 seconds and spontaneously started again. Either of us would be having sort of one of these every couple of little squares or so. All right, and during that episode where he actually collapsed, obviously you can see there is actually none for the whole sort of period of time that the tracing of the heart was being performed until this little, little one here. OK, he has recovered quite well sort of from this episode and we're giving him drugs that will obviously sort of kickstart the heart a little bit and certainly encourage it to beat more rapidly um, than one sort of a whole sheet of paper. Bless so hopefully it'll start working very soon. Close call, really. Very close call. At NICU, another 35-week premature baby, Iona, has been assessed by Chrissy Israel and her team. As her mum Liz couldn't be there at the time, they've shown her a video of Iona in action. I was actually quite astounded by how well she responded, because the range was still five weeks early. For a baby who's still supposed to be inside mummy's tummy, that was quite amazing really. And it was lovely to see a little face responding to that person who was stimulating her. It's taught me as a mum, and for a dad as well, that even though she is such a preterm baby, that she still will respond when stimulated. So therefore, when we come into the unit, it is important that we talk to her. But I think until I saw that, that I really didn't think that really she was responding much. And in actual fact, she definitely is. The baby's already got signs of being able to crawl at this very early stages. 
and I'm sure if you asked the majority of mums at this stage, they wouldn't believe you. We wouldn't have believed it until we've seen it ourselves, what some of these little ones can actually do. I think especially when they're in such a noisy environment, in special care, that you think perhaps they become immune to that. But in actual fact, the video showed that she is incredibly responsive to things that are going on around her. Are you listening to your mummy's voice? Hello, where am I? Clever girl, hello. Are you coming to see me? Knowing that she does respond to stimulation, then that would make you want to actually, you know, promote that much more because you know that she is going to respond. So therefore, it's not a nine weeks delay, it's nine weeks given the opportunity that you know that she is stimulated, therefore you can interact with her much more. As the day progresses in Wales, finally something resembling a tent is taking shape at the Mountfords campsite. But it's all been a bit much for Dylan the dog. Mum, what do you like about Townsend? What do I like about I know, spending the time with us. That's it? Yeah, spending because you're my most precious things. Oh, thank you, Mum. <laughs> so I'll do anything for you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of it then? I think it's good because I think it's upside down, Mum. This year we bought all the electrical hookup stuff, electric kettle, and we've turned up, and I mean, it's on a beautiful sunny day, and they've had a power cut. So we can't even have a cup of tea. But fortunately, Richard's thought of everything. There's a contingency plan for boiling water. But seeing there's no electricity, we'll, we, we've got this kettle's big enough, we can make tea for the whole campsite. But there's no way I'm walking over to the toilet block to fill this kettle. Can you just see me walking across, Josh, like this? Come on, come on. To go to get some water. Okay. Well, don't you spill it. I'd much rather be in a hotel. But because <laughs> they love doing it and I love them, <laughs> then I'll come camping with them. But um, I have got other preferences. While Dad puts the finishing touches to this four-star accommodation, Tom gives us a guided tour. My new Josh is them. Quarters. I know it's a bit dirty because we'd be running into it. Like that. Where do you like sleeping, Will? In with Tom because he sometimes sweeps in his bed. <laughs> and, I, and he snores a bit. And he has a smelly rag. <laughs> Will you excuse us? As the sun starts to set on the valley, the tent is finally ready for occupation. Here's for Dad. Hey, Pip. Hooray. Hey, Pip. Back at the emergency department, the team have decided to put an external pacemaker on Bill so that if his heart slows too much, they can increase his heart rate immediately to help prevent an arrest. I'm just going to take some more of that lovely chest hair off, I'm afraid, OK? Because we need to pop some big sticky pads onto your chest. OK. Are we all right, mate? Front and back, that way, yeah. How you doing, Bill? I'm fine now. Okay. I'm fine. Any chest pain? Are you having this in your chest? No. Any of those strange feelings that you had earlier? No. no you okay. said to us, I'm not feeling very good, and you're off here, right there. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. okay, first of all, Bill, we'll just get you to roll towards Mike a quick second. You got up? Oh, got to do some shaving here as well, mate. He's a rug, isn't he, this man? <laughs> So you don't have a bath, you go to the dry cleaners, is that right? Okay, so just pop you right over onto your side. Yeah, so right over towards me. So that's lovely, that's fantastic. Okay, these are external pacing pads, Bill. If your heart goes into a funny rhythm, and we've got these on, we can actually help your heart to beat by putting a little electric beat through it. There you go. And you can lie back down, you won't lie feel back them on your back or anything. So if your heart does go into a funny rhythm and we're a bit concerned about you, we can plug that into a machine and that's going to help your heart to beat and, and make sure it beats on the proper time. The chances are that he will require a pacemaker in the future to keep his heart going with a steady, regular rhythm. Uh, it probably the natural pacemakers that exist within his heart aren't working correctly for a reason. Um, at the present time, we don't know what that reason is, and uh, a cardiologist would certainly be able to find out what that reason is and, and correct it. But um, my feeling is that probably he needs a pacemaker. So Bill is escorted to the coronary care unit, where observation and further tests will define his future care. Theatre nurse Veronica now splits her time between hospital and the Birmingham Conservatoire, following the course that may help her to achieve her burning ambition to become an opera singer. I will never regret leaving nursing permanently. I've experienced things in the last two years that 
I'd never found out about myself, a lot about myself, about my stickability, before we touch on anything about my voice, which I'm delighted about, actually, at the moment, it's working so well. I have always sung opera. It suits my voice. I've got, I'm a mezzo-soprano, and I've got quite a, a big voice and quite a big range. Financially, it's a disaster. I'm extremely poor. <laughs> I'm very um, lucky to have a husband that supports me entirely in this. So we are both poor, in fact. Next on Nurses. Well, I've got two brand new theatres to go to and set up, and I'm just so excited I could bust. It's just wonderful. I thoroughly enjoy the bus. Watching them splash around and the joy in their faces is fantastic. Right, you definitely want the epidural? Please. What it is particularly that keeps me going in a job like this, I really don't know. I suppose it's being so cheerful. <laughs> I wish I'd chosen a different career. <laughs> I really do. I honestly don't think we're getting that draw in. Oh, Richard. I'll fight all the way. I won't have them going off to childminders. They will stay with me. And I'll find a way of getting the help we need. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.